So, you're on Into the Future 3 Moon, and you're probably wondering about what you're gonna do next after you beat Into the Future 3 Moon. And we're gonna pick up where we left off in the beginner's guide, so if you wanna see that, bam, there you go. Check that out if you want to see the full beginner's guide. But we're gonna pick it up off that and do a little recap on the beginner's guide real quick. So in the beginner's guide we explored what to do right after Empire of Cats 3 and of course the answer was to go into SOL because going through SOL right after Empire of Cats 3 is very efficient and lots of rewards can be obtained in a very efficient way compared to just hopping right into into the future right after empire of cats 3. in short the smooth way to go about it is to go into sol develop your levels and get your cat food and xp and other stuff all stacked up and ready that's when you can start doing into the future one and of course after you complete into the future one do not go into Into the Future 2 right after unless you have some very nice anti-alien gotchas. That is always an option. But if you don't, you're not going to be ready. So you're going to have to go back to SOL, get some Craze Cats, and then come back to Into the Future and complete Into the Future as a whole. That is being Into the Future 2 and 3. And that is when you're pretty much getting into the mid game as soon as you go up to little nye and get all the crazed cats and are at into the future chapter three you are beginning the mid game so what is the mid game how do you go about tackling such a massive massive portion of the game well we're gonna explore many of the different routes in mid game they can't possibly explore all of them or this video would be two hours long but we're going to explore majority of the major stages and routes to go in the mid game and that will give you a very solid idea of what to do when you reach this point and how to progress and it'll give you a choice on which progression route you want to take during the mid game. So we all know that mid game is extremely massive and there is multiple multiple ways and endless ways you can go about tackling the mid game. But in this video I'm going to show three main routes you can take for the mid game and you can choose which route you want to take. Of course there is going to be the classic smooth route in the video and that is the route that I always take. There's also the fast route. And of course the player option route and I'll explain that when we get to it. So as we all know Battle Cats mid game is always progressing, evolving and changing as we go on. Like 3 or 4 years ago Musashi was considered end game and now it is part of the mid game of Battle Cats. So keep that in mind as this guide gets older and older. The mid game of Battle Cats may be a very different experience in a couple of years. So keep that in mind when following this guide. But without further ado, let's start with one of the routes. And of course, we're going to first start it off on the smooth route. This is the route I highly recommend and the route I always take in all the times I've completed Battle Cats. It is a very, very chilling and efficient way to play the game. Now throughout this video, I'm just going to have some gameplay in the background so you don't have to stare at a black screen the whole time. But anyways, let's start off, of course, the smooth route. Of course, the first thing I recommend doing after beating Into the Future 3 Moon is to start grinding. Mid game is the grindiest part of Battle Cats. It's where you're going to have to get all your units to true form all of your Cats of the Cosmos treasures superior. You're gonna have to grind XP stages countless and countless of times just to get all your units to level 30. Well, all the units you'll be using, getting all of those to level 30. And of course, you're gonna have to grind countless and countless amounts of cat fruit as well so you can true form those units and get a huge nice boost to your overall lineups and all of your teams moving forward through mid game. So that is the first thing I recommend doing right after beating Into the Future Chapter 3. Start grinding. Start grinding all of those cat food stages. Start grinding all of the XP stages. Do not bother doing the weekend stage and the normal XP stage anymore. 
only focus on the XP Mega Blitz and above. So XP Mega Blitz, then it's XP Colosseum, of course, grind that as well. It is probably the most famous XP grind since it is repeatable and very, very useful for grinding XP. And of course, when Merciless XP comes around, do it every time you can as well. You do not want to miss that. And as far as cat fruit stages go, pretty much do every single one you can. You don't really have to do cat fruit buffet, so you can save some energy there. Isn't really a stage you have to do every time it shows up, but the rest of the stages I do absolutely recommend grinding the cat fruit stages because you're gonna need a lot of cat fruit to true form all of the units you haven't already. Now let's also not forget a very crucial part to mid game and a very big part in end game is also of course grinding cat tickets, normal cat tickets. This is very crucial for getting your normals leveled up and very high leveled very quickly so make sure you do facing danger every time it appears, do not miss it. And every now and then make sure you do the Super Metal Hippo stage, but that is optional if you want to get some extra cat tickets, but absolutely do facing danger every time you see it. And of course, if there's special events and there is the Cyber's Vengeance stage, then you can do that as well for the huge bonus of 5 cat tickets. The main thing you gotta look out for as normal tickets go is of course facing danger. That is pretty much the only one you really have to look out for, the rest is all optional. And if you're wondering why you need to grind normal tickets, it's not only to get your normals at a decent plus level, it's also because you can get a very great amount of rare tickets from these normal tickets, trading in 5 blue power ups that are already maxed out can give you one rare ticket. And if you effectively grind those normal tickets, you can stack up and rack up a lot of rare tickets and save them for stuff like Uberfest, Superfest, whatever you decide. So that is why I do recommend grinding some normal tickets. That is more a heavy part in endgame, but it won't hurt to get some very nice leveled normals and some rare cat tickets early. Now this is what I call the grind phase in mid game. This is where you're developing all of your gacha units, getting all your units true form, getting your XP, getting a whole bunch of rare tickets, unlocking new gacha units. This is basically setting you up for the rest of mid game. So while you're doing these things in this grind phase, there is some other things you can do as well. And a very big one is if there is a Cat of the Cosmos treasure festival, then I absolutely recommend moving your time to that and trying to get some treasures early. And that will help out a lot in the future where you won't have to wait for Cats of the Cosmos treasures all the time. So if you do see Cats of the Cosmos Treasure Festival, make sure you go over there and start grinding as much treasures as you can. Then once you are finished, you can come back and start doing SOL. Getting those flags and racking up that cat food is very crucial, so make sure you do progress through SOL to a decent point. Now there is a lot of factors that can impact your progression in SOL, and that is of course your gacha units, and if you do not have the good gacha units if you just can't pull any of the decent gacha units if you don't have any great ubers then you're gonna have to let your user rank carry you so that is another grind and is only very crucial if you do not have any of the gachas so grinding your user rank is highly recommended if you do not have the key gacha units now you must be wondering boogle why the hell would I have to grind user rank if I don't have the key gacha units? Well, there is a replacement for those key gacha units and that is of course level 30 crazed cats slash mana cats and that is pretty much the full replacement if you do not have any of the key gachas and that will let you progress to a very far point even without the very key gacha units. Now let's take a deeper dive into this grind phase and explain what can happen when you are progressing in SOL while in this grind phase. Now there is a very key thing to keep in mind when going through SOL in this phase and that one key thing is not to rush. I'm sure you know about the whole stuck cycle I've talked about in the beginner phase, well let's dive into that a bit more in this video 
and in this smooth route because if you try to rush in this smooth route it won't go well. So before we go into that let's get an idea of what rushing actually is. So let's say you just beat Little Nye in SOL and you're looking to progress in SOL and get to the later subchapters while you're in this grind phase. Well rushing is when you sweep through a very large amount of SOL subchapters without letting your units progress in levels. Now don't get me wrong, there is no issue with rushing if you're doing the proper grind on the side by getting your units developed quickly. But when you are rushing and not letting your units progress as you progress in levels through SOL, it is gonna get very very difficult and you will enter the stuck cycle. Now you must be wondering, Google what the hell is this stuck cycle you're talking about? Well let's get into it. The stuck cycle, this is when you're progressing way too fast in SOL and not letting your units levels catch up with your progression. That will create a very setback effect and as you progress through SOL more and more, you're gonna reach a point where you get to a complete stop and you aren't able to progress anymore. And you're gonna notice that you're gonna be stuck there for quite a long time. And the reason this happens is because as you're progressing so very quickly through these SOL subchapters and not letting your units levels progress, you're gonna reach a point where your units are not going to be capable of beating the current point you're at. So you're going to be under leveled, you're going to be stuck in this situation where you're going to have to wait until all of your units, your main units that you use, you're going to have to wait until all of those units catch up in levels to match the point of progression you're at right now. That is why rushing is a very dangerous thing when done incorrectly. So that is why it's called this stuck cycle because you're going to be at the point where you're going to have to be on this level stuck for a couple months just getting your unit levels catched up to your progression. Then once you eventually progress and beat the point you're stuck at, you're just going to face another very large barrier unless you've grinded enough for it properly. So that is why it is a stuck cycle. You're going to be constantly getting stuck after that unless you get to a point where you can smoothly just glide through the game and not have to grind your units levels and get other units true formed all the time and having to hyper max units all the time. So that is why I do not recommend rushing otherwise you'll get in the stuck cycle. A nice example I can give of this, someone came into my discord and was asking for help on the great escaper. So I asked them to show which lineup they're using and their units levels and stuff and when I got the screenshots back I realized that this person was in SOL 18 and he did not have a normal cat above plus 3 and most of his other units were below level 20 as well and I wondered how the hell did you rush to this point so quickly and then I looked at the rest of the screenshots and of course I saw the ubers he had and he was using these ubers to carry him in progression and using it to rush very quickly to reach SOL 18 well that in effect caused him to get stuck on SOL 18 and for a very long time and he had to develop all of his units levels, get them all ready and then finally he was eventually able to beat SOL 18 and move on. And that's in the beginner phase so imagine what can happen in the mid game phase where it is such a massive branch of progression and so many ways you can go about tackling the mid game. If you decide to rush in the mid game and not get the proper units and proper levels, you're gonna enter the stuck cycle and you're gonna be in it for a very decent amount of time, sometimes even months. So that is the in-depth explanation of the whole stuck cycle and why you should avoid it in the mid game unless you are rushing properly and that means getting your units matched up with your progression level. No matter how fast you go, if you grind your units and get them decently leveled and you have some nice gotcha units to help you out then there is really no issue in rushing. The only issue is if you're rushing and not letting your units progress as you progress in SOL. So back on the topic of the grind phase. So once you reach the end of grind phase 
let's say you get up to Mina and you're pretty much set on your gotchas if you don't have any good gotcha units and anything at all in the ubers you're gonna have to get that 3650 user rank to get your crazed cats to level 30 so you can progress further but that is only if you don't have like any of the key gotcha units so keep that in mind i'm not forcing you to get 3650 user rank at mina as some people think it is only if you have none of the key gacha units. So what do you do when you reach the end of the grind phase and what marks it? What marks the end of the grind phase is when you have most, if not all, of your key gacha units true formed, level 30, ready, and you're set. That is when you can start heading on into the manic stages. Now let's talk about the mana cats. These are pretty crucial to progression once again. If you have no good gotchas, mana cats can pretty much carry you through most of SOL if not all of it. And it can replace a lot of things, a lot of key units that you might not have. So let's hop into a few requirements here. If you want to get the full picture and the full detail requirements, you can check out the prelude to manic stages video. And that two part video will get you pretty much set up for all the manic stages but we're just going to summarize it here so first major thing of course is getting your key gacha units all developed and ready and like i said earlier if you do not have any of the key gacha units or you have very little and you need some replacements then of course you're going to need to get 3650 user rank to get those level 30 crazed cats. And the last major thing you need is of course power-ups. You're gonna have to grind a lot of power-ups so you are ready to tackle all these manic stages with ease. So let's hop into the manic stages for a bit. Not too much since it is pretty much explained all in the prelude to manic stages video but we're just gonna hop into a little bit of the manic stages and which ones to do first and which order and everything like that. So of course the first manic stage I recommend doing absolutely if you do have Octo or any other wave blocking unit. Manic Macho Legs is basically a free manic and you can get this manic very very early on. And even before Into the Future 3 if you have a level 30 cyborg and a bunch of very high DPS units. Octo, Crew Japan, BAM you get Manic Macho Legs a very free manic to get if you do have a wave blocking unit like Octo. But as far as order to beat these stages, it doesn't really matter which order you do. It's just dependent on which one is easiest to you. So that is why I started off with Manic Macho Legs as a suggestion, because it will be the easiest if you do have Octo or wave blockers. But if you don't, then there might be another Manic that is super easy for you to do. Maybe you can cheese Manic King Dragon and you can get that but it's all dependent on you and your units what units you have and which levels are easiest for you and whichever manic stage that is that is the one you should go for first and move on to the rest. Now you must be wondering what are these manics gonna be for of course like I said before they're gonna help progress through SOL a lot if you don't have all the key gacha units they can fill in some holes and they can replace some of those units so that is one reason to get the manix but another very massive reason to get the manix at this point in the game is of course to get ready for the deadly advents this is the very prime order for smooth progression first it is doing the manix stages then of course once you complete the manix stages then using those manics to tackle the deadly advents. And like the manic stages, the order really doesn't matter that much as long as you do the one that is easiest to you first and keep following that pattern until you eventually beat all of them. But I do recommend saving ones like Dabu and King Wawa for the end because you're going to need some decently leveled units for those and doing those first can get pretty rough. And as far as requirements go for these deadly advents, it's pretty much the same thing as Manix. That is why I recommend doing the Manix first, because while you're getting ready for the Manix stages, you're also getting prepared for the deadly advents, getting those key gacha units to true form, getting those crazed cats to level 30, 
and getting those mana cats. This is why I call it the smooth route because the progression in this route is so seamless and smooth. It is not that difficult and you're going to be prepared for many of the stages you are going to take on in the future. And some of these deadly advent cats are very crucial for later parts in the game like heavenly tower and of course the end game advents. And now is basically the prime time to take on these deadly advents because at this point of the game when you start taking on these deadly advents you should be pretty much ready to do all of them and if you can't do all of them the only ones you might struggle with is Dabu and of course King Wawa and the reason I say those two is because those generally require higher leveled units you're gonna need that level 30 manic Jamera if you don't have some decently leveled gacha units and you're gonna need some very boosted normals if you don't have good ubers for King Wawa. And that's why I generally say once you're ready for the manic stages, you're also ready for the deadly advents as well. And generally, if you have like most of the key gacha units, if not all of them, then you can maybe even do some of the revenge deadly advents and get some of the deadly advent cat true forms. And that pretty much wraps up the deadly advents. So you must be wondering what comes after this massive leap in progression where you get all the manics and complete the deadly advents. What is after this? Now this is where the branch gets a lot more confusing because there is a multitude of progression routes you can take and it does get tricky. But going with the smooth way and the smooth route of progression, of course, you're gonna go up to SOL until you reach Musashi. It SOL 37 and this is when you're very ready to take on Cast of the Cosmos 1. Now of course you can do it before this but this is when it becomes very smooth and you'll be able to progress through Cast of the Cosmos 1 without any real issue at all and with very minimal treasures as well. Now of course that won't be an issue if during the grind phase you went to Cast of the Cosmos 1 and did get a bunch of treasures during treasure festivals that appeared during that time but if you didn't don't worry too much because you won't need that many treasures once you reach this point. And if you have some very overpowered anti-alien ubers and anti-alien gachas, then of course this will be a very big joke as well. And you can do it a lot earlier than mentioned. The main thing to keep note is having level 30 true forms and getting those treasures. If you don't have the treasures, you're gonna have to boost your units just a little bit so you can make up for the loss of boost against aliens and such in Cast of the Cosmos because the treasures are extremely massive parts of Cast of the Cosmos so keep that in mind. Now let's do a small little recap before we get into the other half of this progression route. So here is the smooth route recap so far. So in the beginning of this route of course we had the grind phase and this can be broken into two parts. You can either go the Cats of the Cosmos way or of course you can start getting into the Manix. And eventually they will both lead into the Deadly Advents. And from here this is when progression gets pretty straightforward and the next thing to do is to either complete Cats of the Cosmos of course and of course take on stuff like the Revenge Advents some of them if you can and of course heavenly tower but mainly you'll be on your way to beating sol so that is the main progression route after beating deadly advents and cats of the cosmos as a whole that pretty much wraps up the smooth route but now let's head on into the fast route so many of the things in the fast route stay the same as of course the main thing being right after beating into the future three moon you're gonna have to enter the grind phase and just grind up all of your units. Like I said before, rushing is a bad thing, but rushing the correct way is not a bad thing at all. So the correct way to do that is to get your units properly ready so you can progress very quickly through the game. So of course, in the grind phase, you must be wondering what it is. And if you didn't see the explanation before, I'll say it here again. The grind phase is getting all your units to level 30 getting all your units true formed, getting all of your XP stacked out so you can max out those units, grinding all the power-ups you'll need for the, all the manic stages, grinding all the treasure radars you'll need for the deadly advents. Grinding everything in this phase is crucial, that is why it is called the grind phase. And of course, 
if there is a Cats of the Cosmos Treasure Festival, go do that as well. You do not want to miss those. Do those every chance you get. Now, this is where things get a lot more different and there's a lot of ways you can approach this. But in the fast route, everything is very streamlined and straightforward. So that means even before the whole grind phase, if there's Cats of the Cosmos Treasure Festivals, do absolutely go into that and try to sweep it all in one run and get every treasure you possibly can and try to finish Cats of the Cosmos 1. But if you don't, of course, that is fine because after the grind phase, you're gonna go into Cats of the Cosmos 1 and of course complete it. Then you are gonna come back and then you are gonna go into the Manix. And the reason you do this in the fast route is because, of course, this is for fast progression. So without spending too much time doing SOL yet, you can push it off to the side and go through Cats of the Cosmos 1 and hop right into the Mana Cats after that. And of course, this is all heavily dependent on the gacha units you have and the units you've grinded up during the grind phase. And that is why I recommend taking the smooth route over the fast route because in the fast route, you're gonna need some of the key gacha units, if not all of the key gacha units to pull off this fast progression. Now, of course, after you beat Cats of the Cosmos 1, this is when you want to hop into the manic stages and start getting those. And of course, you can get them way earlier than usual as long as you have those key gacha units. That is what this whole fast route is heavily reliant on. Having the key gacha units, and if you have some very overpowered ubers, that's also a very nice big bonus to add to your progression. But of course, absolutely make sure you don't rush too much or rush incorrectly. The moment you start to rush incorrectly, you are starting to raise your risk of getting in the stuck cycle. But as long as you grinded up all of your key gotchas and you got them all level 30, true form, good to go, and maybe you got some talents on some of your units, then you can absolutely try to progress in a very fast way because there's no way you should be able to get in the stuck cycle if your units are developed enough. Now that doesn't mean you completely ignore SOL and just not do it at all. Of course, you can do some of SOL while you're getting the Manix, but you just won't need to reach a certain point in SOL to do the Manix because once you have the key gotchas like Cyberpunk, you won't need Mina for Manic Mohawk, so you can do Manic Mohawk right now with your Cyberpunk. So you won't have to go all the way up to Mina. Now, of course, after you get all of the Manics or some of the major Manics, like, of course, Manic King Dragon, Manic Island, Manic Eraser, and Manic Macho Legs, you can start going into Cats of the Cosmos again and either complete Cats of the Cosmos as a whole completely sweep Cats of the Cosmos 2 and 3, or you can do the back and forth while waiting for Cats of the Cosmos treasure festivals. You can just sweep through SOL with your Manix and your key gotchas now. You can pretty much go all the way up to the end of SOL. Of course, you're going to reach a point where you're going to need some of the Cats of the Cosmos treasures, but if you followed the fast route, you should have completed Cats of the Cosmos 1 way before, so you shouldn't have too much of an issue with these starred aliens in SOL. Now, of course, once you eventually complete Cats of the Cosmos and you complete Cats of the Cosmos 3 and you get all the treasures, now you're in a very safe point to just rush through all of the deadly advents and complete all of them, including Puffly. And because you chose to do this fast route, generally you're gonna have most of the key gotchas, if not all, like I said before. So you can pretty much just go through all the deadly advents very easily. The only issue you might have is on Dabu and Wawa. You might need to boost some of your units just a little bit if you haven't already. And you're pretty much set for all of the deadly advents and you'll be able to sweep them all very quickly, so you won't really have an issue there. But of course, you don't really need to do the Deadly Advents right now. You can wait on it and go through SOL a bit more, and maybe reach up to SOL 45, for example, and that's when you can decide to go back and just go through all the Deadly Advents, because your units will be very developed at that point, 
and you can just rush through all of the daily advents at once and not have to worry about them anymore. Now the only things you really have left is just to finish SOL and you should be able to just complete SOL at this point and just go through everything and go all the way and complete SOL fully and maybe you won't be able to go back and do all the 3 star and 4 star but you'll definitely be able to go back and complete all the 2 star, 1 star of SOL. The 3 and 4 star is really going to be dependent on your units levels and what units you have and what ubers you have for 3 star. But it's not like you're going to need ubers for anything in the game at all, but it does help out in progressing fast, so keep that in mind. Now after you complete SOL, you might think you're heading on into the end game, but there still is some stuff in mid game left for you to finish. That is of course completing the rest of the advents, the deadly advents, and the revenge version so you should be able to go back and complete most of the five main deadly advents revenge stages and of course it's also finishing up all the other event stages you haven't done with all the cyclone revenge stages and some other awakening events you haven't done and that pretty much wraps up the end of the fast route compared to the smooth route the fast route is of course a lot faster, well that's an obvious one, but it is also kind of a lot grindier because you're gonna have to grind XP constantly with having to hypermax your units for certain stages for being able to progress faster. But if you have no issue with grinding a lot more XP on the side while you're progressing, then the fast route is for you if you want to just complete the game very quickly. But of course with the fast route there's always a risk of progressing too fast. If you don't get your units leveled up for your progression you're gonna get stuck very easily. And that is why I recommend the smooth route over the fast route because if done incorrectly the fast route can really screw you over. So as long as you can progress fast in the right way this is the route for you and this will be a very quick way to go through the game and finish up SOL and head on into the end game. Now of course let's do a quick little recap on the fast route and then we'll move on into the final route of the video. So of course in the fast route the first thing you got to do after the into the future 3 phase the same thing as the smooth route it is the grind phase and the next thing after the grind phase is of course completing Cats of the Cosmos 1. Then after Cats of the Cosmos 1 it is of course completing the Manix. Then after the Manix it is of course another branch route here. You can either do SOL with Cats of the Cosmos, you can do Cats of the Cosmos alone. Either way you're going to be completing Cats of the Cosmos as a whole and doing SOL on the side. After that it is of course the deadly advents. Then you'll be on your way to completing SOL. Then it's just doing the revenge advents and some of the events you haven't done already. And that is the fast route of progression through Battle Cats mid game. Now let's move on to the last route of progression and of course it is the player route and this one I'll explain because you're probably confused on what this is. So you must be wondering what the hell is the player route? Well as you know or if you didn't know, if you've been playing Battle Cats since the release you notice that some stuff was released in certain orders to make people progress in an easier way without getting a whole bunch of players stuck at a certain point. So in the smooth route we explored some of that where we followed some of the chronological orders of the events and the releases but not fully because fully following the chronological release order right now isn't really that efficient compared to taking some shortcuts here and there. So that's why the smooth route is not solely the chronological route. But in the player option route you do have a choice to take that chronological route. But I'm not going to explore the chronological route in this video. The reason I brought up the chronological route is because in the player option route it's very similar because in the chronological route you only have a few options to go as a player and you're pretty much set in a straightforward path for progression. So that is why it was so easy for everyone to progress 
and so smooth for everyone to progress. But here in the player option route, it's very similar. And the reason is because you can do things like, let's take the beginner's route for example. If you chose the player option for beginner stage of the game, you can complete into the future as a whole and then start doing some craze cats. And that will make some of the craze cats very massive jokes. Like you can bring Awakened Bahamut into Craze Gross and that completely breaks that stage. And this is what I mean by taking the shortcuts and this is what I mean by player options. And a big reason why it's called player option is because you won't be able to follow this route unless you have the perfect units for it. So this is a big optional route and it's all up to the player, hence the name player option. But of course, you must be wondering what must I need to go down this route? Well, of course, using the beginner's phase as an example again, you could only sweep through into the future as a whole if you have some really good anti-alien gotchas and or ubers or units in general. But if you do, as a player, your path is very straightforward. All you gotta do is just complete into the future as a whole and then you can start moving on into other stuff. That's where the straightforward path comes in, because you can streamline through certain parts of the game with certain units, and that makes it very simple for people to follow. Now of course, there's always a risk in getting in the stuck cycle when trying to progress in a fast, streamlined way, but as long as you take the tips given in the smooth route and apply it to the player option route, you should be perfectly fine. Now, all this talk about player option route, but what is the player option route for the mid game? I used the beginner phase as an example, but let's hop into the mid game, of course. So after Into the Future Chapter 3, you're going to be in a position where you've either already beat all the craze cats or you haven't. The first thing is get all the craze cats first. That is the first main route of progression. You won't necessarily need all the craze cats for something, but it is a good mark for progression to get your units ready for future stages. And that's a big thing throughout this whole guide. Just because I say go up to Musashi doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna need Musashi. It's more of a point of reference and a point of progression you should reach. And when you reach that point is generally when your units are a bit more developed and you're ready for the other stages in the game. So when I say go to Musashi or get all the Manix, it doesn't always mean you're gonna need all the Manix. It just means that at that point when you get all the Manix, your units are gonna be very developed and that is a very good point of reference and a point of progression to keep in mind. So always keep that in mind throughout this whole guide. I should have said this a lot earlier, but it is here. And if you've seen it, you know, if you see people in the comments confused about people saying, why the hell is Boogle telling me to get Mina when I have D'Artagnan, send them to this timestamp. But let's continue. So after you get all the crazy cats and everything after Into the Future 3, if you haven't already, then of course, it's the same thing always. It's entering the grind phase, getting all that XP to level up your units, then getting all the cat fruit to true form your units, getting all your power ups ready for the advents and manic stages, farming cat tickets to get your normals leveled up and get some rare tickets, farming NP. There's a lot of things to do in the grind phase to develop your units and get it ready for the rest of the mid game. Now in the player option part of the grind phase, you have a choice here. You don't necessarily have to leave the grind phase once you have all your key gotchas true form, level 30, whatever. You can stay in the grind phase as long as you want and develop your units as long as you want. The more time you spend in the grind phase of the mid game, the more you'll just sweep through the whole of mid game later on. And as a player, you have that option. Like, let's say you want Pizza Waves, for example. So you can stay in the grind phase, grind all those cat tickets, get that NP from that duplicate Anubis you get, and then get some Pizza Waves. Then of course, once you develop your units with talents, and then you start progressing in the mid game, it is gonna be a very massive, massive joke. And that's just with level 30 units. If you developed your units up to level 40 and you hypermax, 
then it's gonna be just an even bigger joke and mid game progression won't really be an issue at all you'll be able to reach the end of sol and start moving into the mid game with no issue at all so depending on how long you stay in the grind phase your next route of progression should be very simple and straightforward no matter what you take so it is your option you can do cats of the cosmos as a whole and just wait on manix for now you can do manix first hell you can do deadly advents first you can do SOL. Now you probably fully understand why I named this the player option route, because just like the chronological route, it's a straightforward. And in the player option route, you have an option to stay in the grind phase longer. And as a player, if you take that option to stay longer in the grind phase, then it is going to be very straightforward progression, just like the chronological route. Of course, you can always stay in the grind phase for a little amount of time and grind as you progress but i do not really recommend that at all because that is not a very efficient way of progressing and that is not what this video is for so i would do a little branch wrap up here for the player option route but there is just way too many options and way too many branches to explore so i'm just gonna let you free on your own path on this one and it is truly the player option route now of course there's a couple things to keep in mind in all of these routes in the smooth route the fast route the player option route whatever route you decide to choose and if not choose there's still some things in the mid game that you got to keep in mind when progressing forward so let's start with a big topic here gotcha units there is of course all the key gotcha units you have and if you want to know all of the key gacha units, I have most of them in the Prelude to Manic Stages video. You can check that out and come back here. And those units are the ones you want to focus on the most because they are the core units for progression. Stuff like Camera, Cyberpunk, Can Can, Fishman, Pizza, Cyborg, Dalmaturd, Seafarer. There is a lot of key gacha units to keep in mind. And yes, if you follow this guide, then you should have progressed those units during the grind phase and get them up to a very nice point level 30 true formed and you're pretty much set but if you for some reason don't choose to take any of these routes of progression you gotta keep in mind those are the core units you really need to focus on yes you have your nice juicy ubers and maybe you have some very overpowered ubers maybe you have matama and you wanted to get that maxed out i mean sure if you want to max out your matama first go for it but just keep in mind you're gonna have to grind a lot of xp but try to focus on the core gacha units this is the base of all your teams if you don't have a solid base your team is gonna crumble in itself so make sure you build a decent base for your teams then you can move on into the more fancier units you have and may want to upgrade. It's also a lot more efficient to focus on these units first, XP wise, and of course, if you want to spend more time in the grind phase, grind more XP, then for sure, take that player option, and if you want to max out your Ubers, for sure, go for it. Just make sure you build a proper base for your teams first and max out some of the key gotchas and get those done otherwise you'll just be wasting xp because it's not efficient to upgrade everything you have upgrade the key stuff you have so all your key gotchas and maybe some very overpowered ubers you have but leave the rest because you're probably not going to use them and once you have like all the major key gotchas and a few couple overpowered ubers it's gonna be a waste of xp upgrading units you won't use later on and if you don't upgrade those units it also saves xp to boost your current set of units so you can get your key gotchas to hyper max and get them all to 40 you can get your main ubers to 40 it is a lot more efficient and it helps in progression greatly now another big factor in gotchas is of course np where do you spend your NP and when do you save it? When do you use it? What units do you exchange for NP even in the first place? Well, let's start with that. So the units you want to exchange for NP, of course, let's first get this out of the way. If you get a duplicate Uber, do NP it and 
If you haven't unlocked NP yet and you do pull a duplicate Uber, do not sell it for XP. Save it in your cat storage until you do eventually unlock NP and then later you can make the smart move of selling that dupe uber for 50 NP. You're gonna have to scale this very smartly and this is difficult for a lot of people because sometimes you might benefit from that one uber dupe. So just keep that in mind. So you gotta scale. Is that one uber dupe gonna be more effective and help in the long run or is selling that uber dupe and getting NP to boost up your key gotchas and make them more overpowered the better option? That is the question you gotta keep in mind when always selling uber dupes for NP. So do keep that in mind. Of course if it's a trash uber then go ahead and sell it but if it is something that very well benefits from one plus level most of the time Ubers don't really benefit that much from one plus level, but if it does, then do keep that decision in mind and that decision is up to you to make. But personally, I always sell uber dupes for NP because I don't think it really makes that much of a difference having one plus level, but that's just my personal decision. Now straying away from ubers, what about the super rares and rares? So the same thing kind of applies here. If you pull a dupe of a super rare that really benefits in plus levels, then use it. If it doesn't benefit from plus levels, sell it for NP. A very great example for this is of course Can Can. If you pull a Can Can dupe, of course use it because Can Can benefits extremely greatly from dupes and any levels, so having that plus level on Can Can boosts its stats, its HP, attack, and that is what Can Can uses in battle. That is what Can Can benefits from. So having more stats is a lot better for units like Can Can. But let's say you pull a duplicate for Apple Cat. Apple Cat is a unit that doesn't really benefit from plus levels because Apple Cat is a unit made for crowd control and plus levels does not benefit crowd control units like having a plus one on iCat won't increase the length iCat can freeze red enemies because that is the main use of iCat to freeze red enemies not the health not the attack it is of course that crowd control that freeze ability and having plus levels on iCat isn't beneficial for that at all it is wasting a whole bunch of potential NP. And that pretty much applies to the rest of the gacha units. Units that are focused on crowd control and have a crowd control ability are the units you do not want to use dupes on and sell for NP. Stuff like Necromancer, stuff like Sanzo, and stuff like Psycho Cat. But what about Cyberpunk? Cyberpunk is a crowd control unit. And should you use dupes for cyberpunk? You must be thinking, of course not because cyberpunk is a crowd control unit. But actually, cyberpunk does benefit greatly from having extra dupes. Those stat bonuses is very helpful for cyberpunk. So you gotta keep that in mind. Does this dupe benefit the cat very well? But if a unit is solely for the purpose of crowd control, then of course, it will not benefit from dupes at all. Level 30 for that unit and you won't need to hypermax or boost that unit at all. And that is generally the thing for NP. NP can pretty much carry through the mid game if you do get those nice key gotcha units NP'd up. Let's say you get your camera, get your survive, attack up on that camera, get your pizza waves. Now I can't possibly hop into all of the key gotcha units and what NP upgrades to do on those key gotcha units. I'm already at the 25 minute mark of this video. That may be saved for a later guide or a separate guide, but I'm just here to tell you about the main progression routes and how to make it easier and smoother. And a big thing to keep in mind, at the end of the day, you can progress however you want to progress. I'm just here to tell you the easier ways to do it and the efficient ways to do it. If you want to skip the grind phase, go ahead. If you want to grind as you progress, go ahead. But 
as a guide maker, I'm not going to tell you to do that because that is not really that efficient. I'm here to bring you the efficient way to progress and the smooth and easy way to progress. And if you want to follow it, go ahead, go for it. If you don't, that is fine as well. And I think that should pretty much wrap it up. And that is it. That is the full mid game guide and pretty much everything you're going to have questions about should be answered in this video. If it isn't, feel free to comment it down below. I'll try to see if I can answer some questions. Nonetheless, this was a very massive video. I was going to originally release this video, but I just decided I was just going to cut out and just do the smooth route and dive into that a bit more. And that's what the mid game guide is right now, the one that's currently up. But this one is the full version, so make sure you go through. There's going to be timestamps all in the description. It's going to be a very big video to dissect and there's a lot of things said in this video. So keep that in mind. Yeah, drop a like if this video helped you out and that would be much appreciated. I did do a lot to work on this video and remaster the audio and everything. So a like would be much appreciated. Subscribe if you're new. I see a lot of you people are not subscribed. I help you guys out with these guides all the time. So, you know, why not help me out this time just for once by hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already and liking the video. It'll give me that extra motivation boost I need to continue doing all these Battle Cats videos despite having a strong hatred of battle cats. So yeah, good luck to everyone progressing through the mid game for the first time. Like I said before, if you have any questions, you can always put it in the comments. And if I happen to see it, I will respond. And yeah, that's it guys for this one massive video. It's been John Boogle and see ya.